Welcome to MovieMod and Field Distributor's Basic and Intermediate Training. This is Session 8. This is the final session of Part 1 of our class, which deals with MovieMods. We're going to cover just a lot of miscellaneous topics in this session. It's actually a very short session. And then we'll move on to Session 9, which is the beginning of Part 2, where we take a look at field distributors and field bus control. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is look at a few features in MovieTools Motion Studio. We're going to explore something called manual mode. We're also going to look at a number of parameters and see how they work. And I think you'll find this interesting and useful. So let's jump into Motion Studio. We're in MovieTools Motion Studio. Let me just remind you of how our MovieMod is set up. I've reverted back to the settings from session six when we did the hands-on. In other words, we're in binary mode and fixed set point operation. So we're not the way we were set up in session seven when we looked at the scope. We're going to start by looking at a tool that's available in MovieTools Motion Studio that's extremely useful. It's called manual mode. It allows you to operate the drive and just confirm that it works. Now we've already looked at manual mode activated through the keypad. This is similar, although actually it's a little bit more powerful and I think a little bit easier to use. So let's go ahead and fire up manual mode and I'll show you some of its features. You need to go over to your MovieMod under your network scan, right click on it, pick startup, and then pick manual mode. The manual mode tool will pop open here. And the first thing we have to do is activate it. So we click the activate manual mode button. Let me just give you a quick tour of the controls. First of all, we have a diagram that represents the motor in the center, and this has little arrows on it that will rotate when the motor's in operation to show you what direction the motor's turning. These little red parentheses on the sides represent the motor's brake if it has one, and they will show you if the brake is engaged or disengaged. Right now it's engaged. You can see it's gripping the circle, so that means it's keeping the motor from turning. We have start and stop buttons, and we have clockwise and counterclockwise buttons as well. And there's a button here that's grayed out called release brake. We'll talk about that a little later. We have a speedometer here, which shows the motor's speed, and an ammeter, which shows the percentage of the nominal current that the motor is drawing. We also have a status window up here, which indicates if the drive is faulted. Right now it's not, it's green and that means everything's fine. It just says no enable because we haven't actually started the drive. You can reset faults here with the reset button. And then over here, finally, we have a number of buttons that allow us to switch between fixed speeds, like a rapid one and a creep speed. We have a variable speed button here that reactivates the slider so you can control the speed that way. And then we have a ramp value down here. I notice that ramp value is pretty long, it's 10 seconds. Let me change this to something a little shorter. We'll change it to two seconds, just so our motor doesn't speed up and slow down at a painful rate. And let's go ahead and start our drive up and run it and see it in operation. So I'll click start. And you can see that's enabled our drive and it started turning at 60 RPM, which is the minimum speed. You may wonder, where does 60 and 3000 come from? Well, I'll show you that in a few minutes, but right now just accept that that's what manual mode is using. I'm going to speed the motor up a little bit. So we'll just move the slider and you can see the motor speeds up. Notice that the motor diagram is now rotating and the two brake symbols show that the brake is released. I'll reverse direction here by clicking counterclockwise and we'll go the other way. And I'll go back to clockwise. And if you want to go to one of the fixed speeds, you can click its button. For example, creep speed goes at 648 RPM. That's kind of an oddball value. Let's change that to something more typical. I'll change it to 250 RPM. And then we'll click the creep speed button. And that will slow the drive down. Let's set a rapid speed to 1200 RPM and click that, and that goes at a higher speed. We can go back to the slider control by clicking variable and just slide this all the way down. Notice that the motor doesn't actually come to a complete stop. That's because the minimum speed is setting a lower limit. I'll show you how to change that in just a minute. Let's stop our drive here. 
And you notice our brake symbols now show that the brake is engaged and is holding the motor fixed. So that is basic manual mode operation. This gives us a very good way to exercise our drive. I want to go to the parameter tree and take a look at a few things here. In order to do that, I have to deactivate manual mode. So I'm going to click the deactivate button. And this is a very good place to mention that you should never leave manual mode activated because it essentially disables the drive from normal operation. So always deactivate it when you're done with it. And it always gives you this little warning that if something is turned on, it is possible the motor could just run when manual mode releases. Since I have a demo unit and my switches are all off on my control box, I know nothing's going to happen. So I'll click yes here to exit. And I'll go back to the parameter tree. Now, one of the things that you may have wondered about is why did we have those sort of odd minimum and maximum speeds, 60 RPM and 3000 RPM? Well, they come from a parameter in group three, motor parameters. We haven't really looked at this branch of the parameter tree much. It's subgroup zero limits. So let's open that up. And you notice we have two parameters, 301 and 302, that are minimum and maximum speed values. They also have those little blue eyes next to them. And that is because these two parameters correspond to the F1 and F2 speed dials when they are being used to set the motor's minimum and maximum speeds. Now, do remember when you're in binary mode, the F1 and the F2 dials provide the two speed set points. But when you're in RS-485 mode or field bus control mode, which is basically the same thing, the F1 and the F2 dials set the maximum and minimum speeds. Well, we have disabled those controls, and so these parameters are taking over that function. And these are just the default values that they're set to. So I'm going to change these to something else. I'm going to change minimum to zero and actually allow my drive to just be completely stopped. And I'm going to change maximum to 1800 RPM, which is my motor's nominal rated speed. And now if I go back to manual mode and reactivate it, you'll notice that the limits have changed and now it reflects what we've programmed in. Now I need to adjust my slider here. I'm going to move that all the way down to zero and I'm going to click the start button. You notice that the brake releases, but the motor isn't actually turning because now it's allowed to come to a full stop. But if I adjust my slider, of course, then it's going to accelerate up to that new maximum of 1800 RPM. And it's doing it rather slowly because my ramp time is reverted back to 10 seconds. Let's change that back to two so we don't have to wait forever to make speed changes. And if we do a stop now, of course, we'll come to a stop pretty quickly. All right, let me show you something else in the parameter tree. You may have wondered why do we have this button that says release brake and it's grayed out. Well, I'm going to explore something I've mentioned a few times but never demonstrated, and that is the ability to release the brake without actually enabling the motor. You may remember there's a dip switch that you can use in easy mode to enable this feature, and there's also a parameter in expert mode. We'll play with the parameter, but remember you can do exactly the same thing with the dip switch as well. Now I need to deactivate manual mode first and go back to my parameter tree, and I'm going to go to parameter group seven, control functions, and pick subgroup three, brake function. And here is the parameter of interest, 738, activate brake release without drive enable. It defaults to off, which is the way we normally want the brake to behave. But notice it's got that blue eye because that indicates there's a dip switch that controls it as well. Now we've disabled all the dip switches, so we're going to control this by parameter. So I'm going to turn this on. And this enables me now to release the brake without enabling the motor. There are reasons you might want to do this. In some applications, maybe you need to move something manually. You don't want to use the motor. You want to move it physically just by releasing the brake and maybe turning it or shoving it. And so this mode enables you to do that. And you can do it through manual mode as soon as you turn this parameter from off to on. Let's go back to manual mode and reactivate it. You notice the release brake button is now available. So I'm going to click this and watch the brake symbol around the little motor. You notice it shows the brake released. Now the motor isn't turning. We haven't actually started the motor, but notice that I can turn the motor by hand because the brake is released. 
So that is something that you can do if you enable that feature either by the dip switch or by turning that parameter on. Let me close the break up again. There we go. And now, of course, we couldn't turn it by hand because the brake is holding the motor fixed. Let's deactivate manual mode. And I want to show you one other thing in connection with this feature. When you're in binary control mode, which we are still in, it is possible to release the brake using one of the switches. Let me demonstrate how this is done. We need to change our binary mode. However, remember, we're still in fixed set point mode. So we need to go to parameter group six, subgroup zero, which is binary inputs, open this up. And we need to go back to the standard binary mode where the drive is controlled by clockwise and counterclockwise and has the set point speed changeover selection. Now, right now, the motor is not turning because clockwise and counterclockwise are both turned off. When we have enabled the brake release function, the F1, F2 signal now has two purposes. When the motor is turning, the F1, F2 switch controls which set point is in force. Let me demonstrate that. I'll just start the motor up here. So we're operating at our F1 speed, which is controlled by a parameter in this case, since we've disabled the mechanical controls. Now look what happens when I switch the F1, F2 switch on. We slow down to the other set point. This is normal binary behavior. We're very familiar with this. Now I've stopped my drive. However, the F1, F2 signal now has an alternative function when the drive isn't turning, and that's a brake release signal. Let me turn the F1, F2 switch back on, but not turn the motor on. I just heard a clunk. That means the brake released, and now I can actually turn the motor freely. So the F1, F2 switch performs this extra function when we enable that feature either through the parameter or the dip switch. Let's engage the brake again. So there we go. That's something handy to be aware of. So that's available in simple binary mode, either by dip switch or parameter. So it's available in both easy and expert mode. And as you'll discover in the very last session, session 11, you can also control the brake over the field bus by setting a bit in what's called a process data word. And I will point that out in that session. Okay, so those are the things that I wanted to show you in MobyTools Motion Studio. All right, now we have already used the DBG60 keypad once. I've shown you how to do a number of things, but now that we're in expert mode, there are a few additional things that I'd like to show you. I'm going to show you how to change parameters using the keypad. It's a slightly arduous task with the keypad, but it can be done. And if that's all you have, sometimes it's what you have to use. I'm also going to show you how to use the keypad to make backups of the parameter set. You can use this feature if you want to create a bunch of identical Movimots. What you would do is parameterize one, then make a backup with the keypad, and then just go down the line and restore the keypad backup onto each additional Movimot. So I'm going to show you how to do a backup and a restoration. All right, well, we plugged our keypad in and turned on the Movimot. You can see it's in expert mode. It identifies that on the keypad. And now we're on the basic display screen. First thing we'll need to do is hit our menu button. And then we pick parameter mode with the arrow keys and then press the OK button. We access parameters by typing in their numbers. So we're going to type in the parameter number that we wish to change. Let's turn that break enable function off because that's what we want it to normally do. So we'll go to parameter 738 and we have to press the switch button. That's the one in the middle of the keypad in order to change the value of the parameter. Notice when you press it, it goes down there where it says on. And then if you press the up or down button, you can change that. We'll change it to off and press OK and then switch to go back up to the parameter number. If we want to enter another parameter at this point, we could just key it in. For example, we could key in 000, which displays the speed at which the movie mod is running. Now let's look at how we do a backup. The keypad can hold a single backup image of the parameter set. To access the backup function, we would again hit the menu button. 
and then we would navigate down to copy to dbg and press ok and notice as soon as you do it the backup begins immediately there's no warning and there's only one backup that can fit in memory so if there's one in there it's being overwritten right now so always be careful with the keypad you don't get a lot of chances to back out of things it takes about 15 seconds to make the backup and there it goes now to restore a backup into a MovieMot, you just go down to the next option right below it, copy to MM, copy to MovieMot, and you press OK. And again, it's just going to start the restore immediately. It's not going to give you a second chance, and it's overwriting what's in the MovieMot at this point. So again, be very careful before you press OK. It takes about 15-20 seconds to restore the parameter set, and as I said, you can use this to duplicate MovieMots across multiple units if you wish to do that. And that is all I'm going to show you on the keypad, but that should enable you to do most of the things that it's really useful for. And that is it. I told you this was going to be a short session. Well, this is the end of part one. You've now learned all the basics of working with MovieMots, both in easy and expert mode. We're now going to move on to our next session. In session number nine, we're going to start exploring field distributors and field bus interfaces and see how we can take our MovieMots to another level through field bus control. So that is the end of session eight. See you in session nine.